Hey Jenna Crit Chat, Joe here, Sundays with Joe. This is actually a special video that is actually going to be forwarded to a bunch of teachers at a high school who are uh, going to be doing a gender workshop with me. Like I'm doing one and they're doing it as well. So it's kind of a little bit of a departure from what we usually do on Gender Queer Chat. But it's kind of cool because the topic of these workshops is gender and it's going to be presented to grade nines, which is like 14 year olds. And so this week, all of the contributors are going to be doing a video like how would you describe gender in its most basic ways and more specifically the gen gender queer uh, to a bunch of 14 year olds if you were doing a workshop because I'm going to be doing the workshop so welcome to the new people who are watching and check out the reg the next videos this week there'll be seven probably about seven of us this week and we're all going to be doing sort of the same thing so this video is going to be me as if I were presenting this workshop to grade nines so welcome, my name is Jo. Um, I was born Joanne, but I really uh, don't like the name Joanne because it's a distinctly girl's name and that's partly what we're talking about here today. Um, but I just want to ask everybody in the crowd who here identifies or is a girl. Some people will put up their hands. I'll say who's boy. And now who here doesn't like either of those options? Uh, you either say none of the above, both, uh, sometimes one, sometimes the other. Um, and then hopefully one or two kids will put up their hand. Now we're going to have some kids from Positive Space in the workshops that I'm doing. So hopefully some kids will put up their hands. And this will open up the discussion for the gray area, otherwise known as gender fluid, gender variant, or gender queer. So um, one of the things I kind of want to talk about here are just some of the, the basic terms in the world of gender. Um, Transgender, transsexual, sex, gender presentation, gender neutral, gender queer, cisgender, androgynous, two-spirit, kind of goes on and on. So hopefully some kids will get, at this point, the kids will discuss what they know if they know the difference between transgender, transsexual. Gender is between the ears, as they say. Sex is between the legs. When you are born a certain way um, with specific genitalia, you usually get called a girl or a boy at birth. And that is what is called um, assigned sex or gender assigned at birth or sex assigned, pardon me, sex assigned at birth, not gender. Gender is a choice and a child can't really, an infant can't make that choice until they've developed a sense of identity and who they are. And once that's occurred, they can identify what gender they are. But a, another person cannot identify your gender for you. Only you can do that for yourself. So your sex assigned at birth, I was assigned female at birth, for example. So throughout the course of this Day, we're going to be doing a little project. It's called the Gender Gumby. I have a little Gumby here. And uh, Gumby, well, this one doesn't really. But Gumby is supposed to stretch, uh, much like, and he's flexible, or she's flexible, or they are flexible. Um, which means over the course of time, sometimes things change, people change, who you are changes. Um, one thing doesn't change. I'm just going to show you this is my Gender Gumby. We're going to pass this out to everybody. Um, your sex assigned at birth. I was assigned female at birth, so I'm going to put across there. Uh, I don't get a say in that. That's the way it is. Um, as most people don't actually know what sex they are officially, other than their external genitalia. And that is when it's a baby is born and they see a penis, they say it's a boy, and when it's a vagina, they say it's a girl. But there are other ways to define sex, and that is, some of them include, and at this point I usually open up the floor and I draw a list. Um, when I did it with the kids at the high school a few weeks ago, this was one that we came up with. We can pause the video at this point if you want. Um, I'll read them out loud. Boys have, I'll just go down the male, the male column and then I'll go down the female column. Males typically are assigned XX chromosomes. Now, you don't always know your chromosomes unless you have them tested. I actually did have mine tested at some point on a website called 23andMe, which was pretty cool. It was just a um, like to determine your ancestry. But actually, I'll just crisscross here. Female is XY, and um, because I am missing, I don't have the other... I'm wrong. Sorry. Female is X, XX male is XY, and because I don't have a Y chromosome, they couldn't determine my patrilineal heritage. So, uh, they could only figure out my mother's 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 mother, so to speak. Anyway, so I'll start with female. Female is XX, vagina, ovaries and ova, breasts, estrogen, a waist. Um, some of the super, more superficial ones are wear skirts, stay-at-home moms, 
uh, females typically smile. I know statistically in um, Facebook portraits or uh, Facebook um, uh, pictures, people females typically smile and they think they look better when they smile, and males typically don't, and they think look better they they look better when they don't. So male is XY, penis, testes, and sperm, facial hair, testosterone, broader shoulders, and more superficially, pants. They work for a, life, a living. They don't typically stay home with kids, and they're serious. So we did this whole, actually on the board, we made the big list of, and I asked the kids to participate and throw out ideas of what makes a male a male and what makes a female a female. And at the end of it, I put a big X through it all because I said, you know, you can be born with external male genitalia, but no, um, actually, let me tell the story of a, a documentary I watched. It was a girl who had been born with external female genitalia. She had um, breasts a little bit, but she, by the time she was about 16 or 17, she wasn't, um, she hadn't yet had a period, so her parents took her to the doctor and they did a bunch of tests and x-rays. I think it was an endocrinologist, which tests things like um, your hormone levels. And it turned out this person, this girl, who identified as female, had actually uh, had undescended testes. She had XY chromosome, male chromosome, um, for all intents and purposes, she had no female reproductive organs, uh, but she appeared female on the outside, and it was because she had an, I think it was um, androgen, and I'd have to look this up, uh, adrenal blockers. Um, she was not producing testosterone the way a boy would, and so she appeared female. But for all intents and purposes, uh, she was biologically male, um, but she appeared female and identified as female. And she was quite horrified because a lot of people have a lot of uh, problems with gender is a big issue. It's a big thing where people um, get very upset when you use the wrong pronoun. They get very upset when you assume someone's the other the, the wrong gender. If you call someone he and she wants to be called she, um, especially if it's a person who, who does participate in what we call the gender binary. That is the binary of male and female and you're one or the other and never the twain shall meet. So this channel is called Gender Queer Chat and I do identify as gender queer. And one of the things that I discovered quite late in life is that I was never, I was so angry. I always identified as a very, very angry feminist because I knew I had female body parts and I knew I was sexually attracted to men, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Um, I appeared to be a straight woman, but I felt like a gay man. I had a lot of gay male friends and I really related and I really felt like I didn't fit in with women. Women didn't understand me and I didn't understand them. And it just made me very angry. And I didn't quite know how to cope with it until I was 37, which was three years ago. And I discovered the word genderqueer, partly as a result of Chaz Bolognese coming out. And it led me to some YouTube videos, which dis I discovered the word genderqueer, gender variant, gender fluid. Um, some of the things, okay, so let's go back to the chart. Uh, so gender identity, we'll discuss the next one. Gender identity is how you identify in your head. And in most of my life, I, I didn't think I had an option. I thought there were two options. Female was one and male was the other, so I picked female. Now I put myself not in the middle, slightly more towards the female side, but only slightly. I definitely don't identify as female, but I prefer... Sometimes when I think about the way men interact with one another and the way fe females interact with one another. Maybe it's because I have a sister and a mother that I'm very close to. We girls, when we get, I say that tongue in cheek, when we get together, I kind of, I feel a little bit more comfortable than if it was just me and my dad, for example. So maybe that's why I'm leaning to the feminine side, but I don't identify as female. Now, I don't mind the pronoun she, partly because I'm so old, but a lot of people who who do identify as gender fluid, gender variant, gender queer, uh, or transgender, prefer the other pronoun. So usually at this time, we open up the floor and we, we kids talk about the pronoun. Um, I usually talk about, I usually pick out a teacher in the class. Um, in the case when I did it at the high school last few weeks ago, it was a man. And I pointed to him and I said, oh yeah, when she emailed me the other day, we were discussing and everyone was confused. And I said, oh, well did I pick the wrong pronoun? I only had two to pick from and I picked the wrong one. And that's how it feels when you use the wrong one on someone who doesn't identify as the gender they appear to be. So that's usually kind of fun, and we discuss pronouns. And the next one is actually going to be presentation, because that's the same, that's a very similar thing, is how you present to the world. Now, I present relatively female, don't I? I have um, 
but not completely. I'm maybe three quarters of the way. For whatever reason, I oh, here's the cleavage. <laughs> I have a breasts that I have chosen not to get reduced at this time. A lot of um, people in, in the genderqueer community do get top, what's called top surgery, which is actually double mastectomy. Um, I kind of fantasize about that. I would love to have no chest, but it's major surgery, and it, there's a lot of reasons why someone would want to do that or someone would not want to do that. I guess I'm just not there yet. Um, the other thing is I've always had when I was a little kid, I had short hair as a little tomboy kid, and I just never liked short hair. I like long hair. I like long hair on men, and I like long hair on women, and I like long hair on gender variant people. So because I choose to have long hair, especially in this day and age when a lot of men don't have short, long hair anymore. In the 90s, it was more popular, right? In the 70s. Um, I present predominantly female, but I don't shave. I don't wear makeup. I'm covered in tattoos, which is kind of, that's not really male or female at this point. But um, when I was... A teenager in the 80s it was very uncommon for girls to have especially like um, like arm tattoos and you know it was kind of a, an obnoxious thing to do for a girl right um, okay so the last one was sexual orientation and I actually want to talk about how that doesn't fit on this when I usually give this presentation to kids I say gender which is who you are not who you like but who you are is what you were told you were at birth, partly, because that sort of formed the way you were socialized. But it's definitely how you identify and how you present. Sexual orientation is who you are attracted to. And I am attracted to predominantly male, well, completely male-bodied individuals. I've never had an opportunity to, I've never met a pre-op trans man. That is to say, a man who was born female but has not yet had the surgery to construct a penis. So I don't know how I would feel in that circumstance, but that is, you know, there are as many answers to that question as there are people, and everybody is different. I know I'm in the in the positive space groups and in the pride groups, GSAs. A lot of kids identify a lot of different ways. A lot of kids identify as pansexual or bisexual, and this linear spectrum doesn't really cut it, does it? Because I am, okay, so in my case, I'm attracted to men, so I'll put that there. But for a lot of kids, they're they're not, you know, male or female or bi, but where in that spectrum, if you're attracted to a gender queer person, that is to say, say someone who's had a double mastectomy, has no breasts, appears to be male, but has a vagina, where do they fall on that spectrum? What if you're attracted to a person like that? So that kind of annoys me. The gender uh, sexual orientation one doesn't really belong on the gender gumby, but it's there to, to open up a discussion for, oh, here comes my kitty cat. Um... Okay, some of the other things we're going to discuss in the workshop uh, are misogyny. Um, where can we see misogyny in our lives? How does it affect our ideas of gender? For instance, why are there different attitudes for girls who play football than there are for a boy who dances? And I could talk about that for days. Um, we'll definitely get the kids talking about that. Um, what toys being directed for boys and girls? Boys are usually logical, action, puzzle-oriented, and girls are usually like house or caring or um, developing household skills. I'm really sorry about the cat screeching. He's very noisy when he wants to be. Uh, we can talk about gender neutral bathrooms, which is when they're in the gender binary world we live in, there's a male bathroom and a female bathroom. And some people are very uncomfortable going into either. So a lot of university uh, campuses are now um, sporting a gender neutral bathroom. I think the high school that we're going to is going to have one pretty soon, hopefully. Um, it's quite awesome. Sometimes there's a handicap bathroom and people will use that if they're not comfortable especially depending whether or not you sit or stand to pee and whether or not um, that will make an impact on what you think other people might think of you in the bathroom. There's a lot of anxiety, I think, along with people who don't identify as uh, in the gender binary. Um, so some of the goals of this workshop would be to understand the terminology so we can definitely go through um, transgender and transsexual, sex, gender presentation, gender neutral, Cisgender, I just want to talk briefly. Cisgender, C-I-S, gender, is a word that me, it's kind of the opposite of, if there is a binary opposite, to gen transgender. It means someone who was born as one gender and feels good about that gender that they were assigned. The average person is cisgendered, just like the average person is typically considered to be heterosexual. We often call it cis privilege or hetero privilege or heteronormative this is stuff like where people who were born in the correct body, the correct body, and are attracted to the opposite gender or opposite sex, 
are normal people and treated normally in life. They can get married, they can have kids, they can, they can talk about their spouse very openly in life and nobody gives them a hard time. So a cisgendered person, family, is very privileged. And um, as a genderqueer person, I know a lot of times um, when people are, people will say things to me like, oh, well, you, you know, as, as women, we understand, we're more empathetic. She, like Women will include me in their conversation, presuming that I identify as a woman. And I don't, sometimes I don't know what they're talking about, and it annoys me that they've included me. Similarly, I've been excluded because of my gender, um, or my sex. I know some guys at work had a, a party one time, and it was just for the guys, and I wasn't invited, based solely on my genitalia, I'm presuming, and, and how they perceive that. They can't, a lot of people can't per, uh, think outside the box that maybe this person I'm looking at is not as they appear. Or maybe I should just be more open-minded. Maybe there are all kinds of things that I don't know they are. All right. Um, so we definitely want to get the difference between sex, sexuality, and gender. So sex is the thing that you are assigned at birth. Gender is the thing that you know you are in your soul and in your heart. And that may change over a lifetime. I know... Um, I presented very female uh, in my earlier years, and then I went through kind of a phase where I shaved my head and I wore suits and ties a lot, and I presented very masculine for a lot of years in my early 20s. You know, that's very fluid. Um, so these things can change over time. Uh, sex, sex, and then sexuality, of course, is who you are attracted to. And that you can also be asexual, you can be attracted to no one, pansexual, attracted to everyone regardless of what's in their pants, right? Um, uh, there's so many different ways of looking at this, but as a re um, one thing I did want to touch on is that Positive Space Day, and especially for these grade, grade 9 groups that we're going to be doing, I I'm going to presume that most of them have never heard half these terms, most of them have predominantly identified as cisgendered in their lifetime. I really want to open up the idea that that's very presumptuous and it's very disrespectful when you call someone by the wrong pronoun. And when you call someone by the name sometimes that they're born with, even though they choose a different name, for instance, don't call me Joanne, gets me angry. Um, a lot of people have um, a new name that they've picked for themselves that they feel more comfortable with. Be respectful, call them that name. Um, a, an analogy might be if someone gets, typically some people when they get married, they change their name and they want to be called by their new name. And if you insist on calling them by their old name, you're being disrespectful towards them. Um, I also want to touch on, uh, well, I, I mean, I want to open up the idea that this channel, Gender Queer Chat, which is a channel on YouTube, there's at least, at any given time, maybe five to eight contributors, once, once, about once a, every day, we, we put up a video on various topics on gender identity, and um, this channel has been an immense help in my life, because I woke up so late in life, I was in my late 30s when I discovered the word gender queer. Um, but what else? The, I think a lot of this, this, this um, hap, I mean, I'm 18 minutes into this video and I've done all the talking, but we want the kids to talk during this session. We definitely want their ideas on how times in their lives they've gender bent, bended, gender bended, um, you know, times that they dressed as the opposite gender and how they felt when they did so, um, if they were ridiculed, if that was part of the reason why they thought it was wrong, this type of thing. So. Almost 20 minutes, probably my longest video ever on gender queer chat. But I do want to um, encourage you to watch the rest of the videos for the week, and I'll forward this on to the teachers, and hopefully we can have a great time on Pride, um, or Positive Space Day, which is June 6th. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.